powerful idea from Rabbi Salvechik about, about the concept of sacrifices. Now you think about the, uh, there's an entire book really that's of the Torah that's all about sacrifices. And on first glance, you might think, well, how is this book related to us today? On the one hand, we don't really have sacrifices today and, and it's very hard for us to study it. But on a really basic level, if we strip away everything that's extraneous to the core, what really it means to, to be part of a faith, a, a life that's a life of faith, a spiritual life is to be a person who's willing to sacrifice. That's the core. It's just very simple that you're willing to make sacrifices for a greater good. That's it. That's a very, very simple message, but it's a true message. That's it. We have to be willing to make sacrifices for a greater good. That's the fundamental message of what it means to be a Jew. And so in those days, they did it through animals. And nowadays, we do it through other ways. We do it through our time, our money, our emotions. This is what Rabbi Soloveitchik writes. Adam ki akrivimikem, when a man brings from amongst yourself an offering to God, the precept of a sacrifice is central, the precept of sacrifice is a central motif in Judaism. To live in accord with God's word is identical with living a sacrificial life. Basically, to live according to what God told us to do is identical with living a sacrificial life. To act morally is synonymous with sacrificial action. Meaning to say, when God tells us what to do, we're giving sacrifices. It's not just about helping our own bottom line, our own selves, but about giving up certain things because we believe that that is what it means to serve Hashem. What was man called upon to sacrifice? What, what does man have to sacrifice? You know what the answer Rabbi Salvechik gives? What was man called upon to sacrifice? Everything. Everything. That's what he writes. Judaism gives a straightforward answer to this basic theological and ethical question. Man must offer everything he possesses. Everything. Nothing is to be spared. Nothing is to be saved for man. The logic of this answer is self-evident. A sacrificial action consists in restoring that which man had thought was his own to its rightful owner, returning to God, basically, that which was entrusted to man's care and of which he erroneously and impudently took possession. In those days, it meant giving up your sheep or your bull. But nowadays, it means giving up the thing that we think is most precious to us. Since there's nothing within the reach of man which he does not have in trust for and from God, there is nothing whose return to God will not be considered a hallowed sacrificial service. Man must return, this is the basic idea. Man must return to the master of the universe, not only all he possesses in the form of physical goods, but himself as well his body, his mind, and his spirit, and his soul. Everything. Now Rabbi Salvechik writes something which maybe you'll like, maybe you won't. He writes, the uh, Judaism, the tradition, fights ruthlessly against sacrifice of human beings, the heathen curse of human sacrifices. Now, this was condemned and stamped as murder by Judaism. However, we're not supposed to offer the physical body. That's murder. But the offering of the spiritual personality of the human existence to God is a great heroic act. So this is an interesting question. Is there no room for human, humanity outside of our service of God? And Rabbi Salvechik here is 
saying that there isn't because once we deviate from this mission, it's like having a little bit of idolatry. And so therefore, we're basically what Rabbi Salvechik's point is, is that Rabbi Salvechik's point is, is that sacrifice, the concept of sacrifice is what it means to be a Jew. The means, the means of the Torah are probably a little outdated today. I mean, those are my words, not his. Because today we no longer yearn for it, for these animalistic sacrifices. We no longer really understand it. We no longer are rushing for it. But the concept of, of saying that whatever we have is God's, without that, it's going to be impossible to live a spiritual life. That's his basic point. And let me just pause here, see if anybody has something to add. I thought I saw a hand go up. 